So welcome. I'm glad everybody could join us tonight. This is Sarah Allen from the Hunt County Extension Office. And I'm pleased tonight to introduce Miss Treasure and Miss Ellie. They are both from Rockwell County 4-H and they've been very involved in the photography project over the years. And Treasure is, has been through the Junior Master Photography Program. And so they have put together a presentation for us tonight that is a good overview of the photography project. And I'm gonna stay on too and we'll cover a little bit about some specifics of what we do in Hunt County. And then we'll all answer questions at the end. So we're glad you've joined us and girls, I'll let you go ahead and take it from here. Alrighty guys, so, um, oh, I don't know why it stopped the video, sorry. Um, like she said, I'm Treasure. Um, I have been through the um, Junior Master Photographer um, Program and I'm currently going through the Texas 4-H Photography Ambassador Program, so that has been fun. I've been doing the photography project for about three, four years, I would say, and I've done, you know, the contest at county, district, um, and state level. So we're just going to jump in to our little presentation. So basically what we're going to talk about is this is just a project overview of like the project as a whole. And so um, there are goals, um, official photo contest, and then, you know, the photo prep um, category size, and then the photo judging. So Ellie, did you want me to talk about that part or did you want to speak to that? Um, yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, all right. Okay, so um, these are just goals in the photography project. So once you start out, there's not a required amount of knowledge as you start the project out. They just you know, this is for like beginners or people with some experience or no experience. So we'll teach you everything, all the basics at um, county level. So um, they'll teach you how to use your camera, whether it's a point and shoot or a DSLR. Um, they'll teach you how to use lighting. So um, a lot of times they'll have different types of lighting provided depending on what your county has available to them and what they have access to. They'll teach you how to use lighting and other photography equipment equipment like tripods and external flashes and diffusers, just things like that. Um, they'll also teach you how to um, evaluate your own photos and um, check them for quality and appearance. So things you could improve, you know, maybe before you send it off to a contest or something like that. So that way you know how to um, evaluate your own photo when you're on your own and you're trying to enter it into a contest, they'll teach you how to do that. Um, you can also learn techniques about editing and developing your display for competitions or just for yourself, you know, at home. And um, yeah, that's it for goals. Um, skipped on. These are the rules and regulations for the photo contest. So. Um, the Texas 4-H um, photo photography contest um, encourages like self-expression and allows the 4-H youth to demonstrate their skills and what they've learned in whatever area of photography they've been taught. And so, um, Treasure, let, let me interrupt. I'm not seeing your screen. Oh, you're not seeing it? Uh-oh. Let me see. Okay, can you see it now? It's loading. Yes, now I can. Thank you. Sorry about that. But um, anyway, like I was saying, this is just, you know, rules and regulations for um, photo contest. And so um, most of the time they want uh, the photo to have a good composition. So and good lighting and a storyline and, you know, posing and things like that. So typically when you look at a photo, you want 
people to get a reaction out of it. Sometimes it may not be always the reaction you're looking for, but you never want someone to come up to a photo and just like have no reaction, whether it's, it might be like um, happiness or laughter or maybe like fear, you know, something like that. You want them to have an emotion from the photo and hopefully it's nine times out of 10 what you were trying to capture. So um, things like that, when you're taking pictures, you know, it's easy to just go out there and snap, but a lot of times you want to, if you're going to enter into a contest, you want it to have an objective of what story you want your photo to tell and you want it to have good composition and good lighting. So um, back to County, what the goals they'll teach you is how to, you know, light your photo properly so it's not too underexposed or too overexposed either. Um, yeah, so that's it for rules and regulations. Now this is the prep. So typically you want it to be um, in JPEG form or JPG or PNG. So um, just those three you want it in those forms. So um, typically a lot of times with the contest, if you upload it online, it needs to be in like JPEG or something so you can upload it that way. And it's easier to find it when you put in your SD card into the computer or something like that. Um, there are contests most of the time where um, enhanced photos are allowed so you can crop it or trim it or adjust the lighting or, you know, fix like a red eye or a glare, you know, things, things like that, but that will have to be entered under enhanced uh, category. So it can't just be entered into the regular ones. Um, the photographs, typically you don't want them to have like text on it. On animal, um, leading lines, long exposure, motion, interaction, people, elements of design, plants and flora, enhanced shadow silhouette, and those two go hand in hand, and food and theme. So those are all the categories. Um, typically, when you go to enter a photo in the contest, you can go to the website, and it'll give you a good description of what fits into that category, so you have a better way of understanding it, and there's no like confusion of like, oh, which one do I enter? So when you go to the website, it'll have a detailed description of what they expect when they have these categories listed. Um, photo contest, county contest, um, trying to think. Ellie, did you want to speak on this one? I know like a little bit about county contest, but not too much. Yeah, so I mean, our county contest rules are going to be different than like Hunt County's rules. So uh, we were thinking Sarah could go over like y'all's rules and regulations, um, dates and stuff. Yes, I can. Cool. Yeah, I can hop in and do that right now. I think it's appropriate time. Um, the Hunt County guidelines will be coming out December 15th in the newsletter. And we try to follow the district and state guidelines as close as close as we can. The only differences are um, we do offer a Clover Kid division and then the junior intermediate and senior divisions. But as far as the categories of photographs, we do follow the district contest. Now, y'all are gonna talk about district contests maybe in a minute, but this year the district contest is solely virtual where you, are, you will upload your photos. And for county, we are going to be requiring actual photos. Another county opportunity in Hunt County, <coughs> excuse me, is the county fair in April. And we do not have those rules yet. We will notify members as soon as those are available. It will probably be more like March before we get those. But that's another place that once you have the photos printed that you can enter them in Hunt County. So watch for that in the newsletter next week.
All right, so um, we'll go like over more of the district contest rules in a second. I think that's a few slides later. But um, for state contest, only senior members can participate at the state level. Um, and of course you have to qualify for it. So if you're not a senior member, your uh, photo won't be going to state, but yeah. So here, this is just talking a little bit about the district contest, like she already mentioned. So um, I think we can move on from that. Um, this is for Explorer Guides, I believe. So this is just a link to get to that website if you're interested in that um, program. That That's the link that'll take you there. Um, I can put it in the chat if anybody wants to um, save it for later if they're interested in it. Yes, I think that would be good if you can do that in a minute. Let's see. Um, put this, copy it and put it in there so that way you guys can find it. Alrighty. Now we're going to move on to junior master photographer. So um, the junior master photography program informs 4-Hers once again, you know, about basic knowledge about photography and how to utilize those skills. Um, if you're an incoming JMP, um, no previous experience is required. Um, we usually have, you have to fill out an application. There's two workshops that are held um, through the year and then there's one in the fall and one in the winter and there's events throughout the year the JMP can attend so throughout the year there's different things um, different tasks the JMP the new JMPs have to complete so proving they can take certain um, photos I don't remember them all but I believe it's like um, a bouquet an underexposed photo an overexposed photo um, analogous color harmony and there's one more but you know just simple things like that that they've learned in the workshop so it shouldn't be too hard for them to you know do at home or they can use their examples from the workshop to apply to um, completing their JMP um, certification. Um, Where are those workshops usually held? Oh, that's, a, that's a funny you bring that up. So this year we actually had two different locations. They were both supposed to be in the Dallas area. Um, this last one we had was actually in Corinth due to COVID situation. They had to move it to Corinth. It was originally supposed to be in Justin. So usually they try to keep it in the Dallas area, but we've gone as far as Kerrville before when I was doing JMP. So, but they try to keep it in the Dallas area relatively just so it's central for everyone. And do you know, is there an age requirement for that? Do you have to be a certain age to participate? I'm sorry, I don't know that off the top of my head. Yeah, I, okay. I believe it was um, intermediate and up, but I do believe they just lowered like the age, they changed the age requirement. I wanna say it's fifth grade, but don't quote me on that. We were actually, um, talking about it at our ambassador meeting so I don't know if that was like set in stone but I think they were talking about it but as far as I know I think it's intermediate and up. I believe uh, to go to the workshops because I remember I went to them when I was an intermediate member and I think there might have been some juniors to there as well but I don't think you can become a JMP until you're a senior. Good deal, thanks. And so that's just about that. Um, there's a lot more, um, there's trips throughout the year that JMPs can attend. So if, if you're not even close to being an ambassador, you're not interested in it, you can still go on trips with us. So they have trips around, you know, Texas, of course, that they can go on and um, 
different locations so they can practice their photo skills and the parent leaders are there and the also the ambassador program leaders are there also to help you along the trip and you get to spend time with other JMPs and the ambassadors. Um, I think, are there any more questions about JMP? Okay, I'm going to move on to ambassadors. So the ambassador program, you would have had to finish the JMP course. So typically a lot of people do them right after the other, like I did. So I did the JMP and then I got right started on um, trying to fill out my application for the ambassador program. Um, you have to be high school and up. So you have to be senior age and up to be um, an ambassador. So just like JMP, um, photography ambassadors, they go on trips, they attend um, ambassador meetings, they organize field trips. So some of the trips that the um, JMPs are invited to go on, sometimes ambassadors schedule those trips themselves. Um, so they typically um, do things like that. They also, part of the requirement in the training is they have to instruct or teach at county or uh, state or district level. So that's also part of the thing. So a lot of times um, the ambassadors will be at the JMP workshops. I was this past weekend and we just helped teach um, the new JMPs that are coming in or the ones that are finishing their year up and they're gonna be a certified JMP. And so, yeah, there's, um, I'll also go over the requirements for um, the ambassador program because it's more responsibility than the JMP is considering we're in high school and things like that. So um, the purpose is um, for the Texas 4-H photography ambassadors to develop, um, you know, premier youth photography skills and be leaders and represent the 4-H photography program across the state of Texas. Um, the objectives are develop ambassador leadership and communication skills and um, improve ambassador photography skills. So even though we have finished um, JMP, the Junior Master Photographer Program, there's still a lot that we get to learn. So like I said, we go on the trips too, or we'll have our own workshops and we learn at those a lot. Um, we also help 4-H agents understand um, photography resources available to them. So like we're doing now, you know, just letting y'all know what's open and available to y'all. Um, and we try to recruit new members from diverse backgrounds. So, you know, people, whether it's from our county or we meet them at district or different events, things like that. Um, the goals are to assist the Texas 4-H program and uh, lead with event photography. So um, a part of one of the requirements, I'll get into that later, is that um, state events were often there photographing and documenting the state events that happened. So like the dog show, horse show, uh, rabbit show, things like that were often there. And that's how we get our hours, but that's also training for us too. Um, we're also supposed to advocate for the photography project interests, you know, across the state of Texas. So a lot of us live very spread out. There's a couple in the DFW area. There's some that live in San Antonio, Corpus Christi, you know, just very spread out. Um, and we also want to make fam 4 H families and youth more aware of um, the 4 H photography opportunities. So I just actually found out about JMP in 2019 or last year. So, because I didn't even know about it. So, you know, make them more aware of what's available to them and how they can further their um, photography opportunities um, while they're in 4-H. Um, and I, I, would add, I would add here that in Hunt County, um, we always share the flyer for these programs in our newsletter that comes out twice a month. So for any of you listening who are interested in this, you can get with the county extension agents or the 4-H program assistant and see if we know when the next program will be, but also keep an eye on the newsletter because it will be promoted there. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
these are the ambassador expectations that go throughout the year. So this is also what I'm currently doing. And then I'm going to move into um, the awards that are available for us to receive, we're eligible to receive and our dress code. So ambassador expectations, we are, at, once you finish JMP and you fill out the application to become an ambassador, you are expected to fulfill a minimum of 40 hours. You can do more, but that's just what's expected. I think that's for all the ambassador programs like Livestock, um, Equin, um, Water Ambassadors, STEM Ambassadors, it's just 40 hours all the way around. Um, the first requirement is to serve on a photography corps at um, state or national 4-H events. So like I was mentioning, you know, the dog, rabbit, horse show, um, Texas 4-H Roundup, 4-H uh, Congress, and things like that. And so that is overseen by Derek Bruton. He is over the ambassador program. Uh, requirement two is to organize and run a photography event or workshop. So most of the times you'll do something like this at county. It's easier to do it at county, but you can also do it at um, district level if you have some help or you're pairing up with another ambassador or something like that from another county or district. Um, requirement three is to provide instruction at a 4-H photography event or workshop. This, um, a lot of people get confused when they're filling this out like ambassadors. Um, this requirement is different um, than requirement two that I just mentioned. So instructing at a JMP workshop is highly encouraged, but it's not mandatory. So when they say provide instruction at a 4-H like event or workshop, they want it to be different than um, one that you ran or organized yourself. So, you know, probably one that's you know already being held like JMP or something. So it's not required, but if there's another photography workshop other than the one you organized and ran yourself, then that would count. Um, they also, for requirement four, ask that you um, organize and run a photography related community service event. So um, this past spring, as part of one of mine, I took uh, photos for an old friend of mine, family friend, their church. I took pictures for their pastor's anniversary. And so that was my community service for them. Um, so those are the expectations. Okay, um, requirement five is um, complete at least one leadership or citizenship activity. So um, they give a little bit of some ideas just so you don't have to search. It's like, oh, what do I do? So um, you can teach someone how to take photos. You can assist another 4-H member in preparing for a photography judging contest. Um, you can serve as a photographer for club or county 4-H program activities. So an example of that, I took photos for our um, end of the year awards ceremony over this past summer. So I took photos for that. Um, you can volunteer to take photos for non 4 organizations as well. So like your school, um, band, church, et cetera. So things like that. Um, you can plan a photography project meeting and invite someone to talk about professional photography, you know, things like that at your club again or county or district level um, you can arrange a group tour to a photography studio you can um, have a project group or county photo display in a public place so um, the one I had was at our kickoff this um, past fall in September so we had our sewing ambassador and equine ambassador there and so I just had my photos on a table and my photography record book there and you know my photos also um those are all for the requirements um the other expectations are we are required to we're expected to um attend a meeting so a lot of times though throughout the year they might have a couple online meetings so far we've just had two face to face the following day after the jmp workshop um we're also, you know, agreed to represent the 4-H uh, 
photography ambassador program in a positive and a professional manner. So, you know, always, you know, when you're wearing your pin or your shirt, you know, always stay professional and polite and things like that. Um, commit to having the time and, and, and monitor your emails. So a lot of times there's like over 25 ambassadors. So, you know, they expect you to make time for things that you know you need to do if you need to be there to get hours or there's something you need to teach or instructor lead, you know, check your emails, make sure you're there, um, make sure there's no time, you know, conflicts or schedule conflicts. Um, make sure you're checking your emails because no one's going to check them for you. No, you have to check them yourself to make sure you're up to speed on everything. If there's any changes on anything, then, you know, you're already on top of it. You know what's going on. Um, also demonstrate reliability by following through with any commitments. So, you know, follow, piggybacking on the last one I said, you know, making sure you're on time if you're um, agreed to teach or lead a presentation at one of the workshops or lead an event. Like I said, sometimes ambassadors plan, you know, trips, you know, make sure you're on time, you communicating with everyone, everyone's on board, they know what's going on, you're doing your part. Um, so it makes it easier for everyone else. That's it for expectations. Are there any questions on that? Does anybody have any questions? I think that's a really good overview. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now moving on to the awards. Um, photography ambassadors are also eligible for awards throughout the year. Once they have finished, they're awarded to them at the end of the year. So our ambassador year starts on June 1st. So this past summer, and it ends on May 31st of the following year. And um, excuse me, by that time, we're expected to have our ambassador hours turned in and everything, all of our um, requirements completed. And so we can be, you know, officially recognized as an ambassador. So, um, the judging pin is awarded to, um, and some of these also, before I say this, some of these are awarded to JMPs also, actually, it's just one, just one that can be awarded to a JMP, but JMPs and ambassadors who have served as judging, a judge for the photography contest um, can be awarded this pin. So um, if you did a couple contest years, just, I guess how, many you did um, contest, so you're eligible to win this pin. Um, and once they've served as a judge, you have to apply for the pin by May 31st. So you apply for it as you're turning in your hours, making sure everything is, you know, perfect and ready to go. Uh, the next one is the junior leadership pin. This is awarded to ambassadors representing the Texas 4-H photography program at any national event. So such as like the National 4-H photography summit. Um, so this award is earned once a year again, and they are responsible, ambassadors are responsible for applying for it by May 31st. Um, next we have the senior ambassador pin, and this is awarded to ambassadors entering their senior year of high school, the expert Expectations associated with this pin include being a mentor and a role model for younger ambassadors. Ambassadors are also, you know, required for applying for this by May 31st. Then we have the High Point Texas 4-H Photography Ambassador Belt Buckle. So this is awarded to the ambassador who had the highest number of verifiable hours um, served from the previous year. So from June 1st to May 31st of the following year. Um, that's exceeding the 40 hours that are already required. And so th this is like a separate application and process and you have to fill out an hour sheet by May 31st. So yeah, are there any questions about the awards? All right. So next is our dress code. So we do have a dress code. Um, when we go to events or we're leading an event, things like that, um, we have our formal dress, which um, after you've become 
an ambassador. Um, we have our ambassador polo and we have to wear khaki pants or a khaki skirt below the knees, no jeans at all. Um, dress shoes or boots, um, your boots must be clean. So don't come in with a bunch of like a pair of muddy boots or anything like that. And um, we have our name badge on our right side of our polo. And then we have our JMP pin or other pins you might have earned on the right side of your polo collar. Um, our informal dress is um, ambassador polo shirt with jeans, name badge, nice shoes. So obviously close toed, no flip flops, um, name badge, and then your pins once again on the right side of your collar going up. Um, our casual dress is our Texas photography staff t-shirt. So just a, our photography t-shirt jeans or shorts. Um, your shorts don't exceed your hand on your thigh, so nothing past your finger, um, above your fingertips, and you can wear boots, shoes, or sandals. So those are what's required of our dress code, and that pretty much concludes our ambassador program requirements and things like that. Are there any questions about that? Anybody? Okay. That's very interesting. I've learned a lot about the program. Well, thank you all so much um, for tuning in and listening. I hope you all um, heard something that interested you or, you know, found something that you've been looking for within 4-H and, um, I hope you're able to find something you like that continues to feed you. Absolutely. Um, as others log on and listen to this, um, if anyone has further questions about the photography project, we encourage you to call the extension office and speak with Sarah, Mary, or Jennifer. And um, again, we will be putting out information on the Hunt County County Contest on December 15th, and then encourage everyone to also enter the district contest and then look into these other programs, junior master photographer and ambassador that Treasure has discussed tonight. Um, some really good opportunities there. And so um, Treasure, will you stop the recording, please? Yes, I will do that. <laughs>